We all know gratitude. I'm not going to waste my time trying to define what gratitude is. It means to be grateful. Oh, believe me, the same thing you get from me is confidence. The Lord gave me in abundance. Nobody intimidates me easily. I don't care what your daddy has. After all, it's not like my father is poor. You need to understand and begin to deal with those things. Don't let anybody look down on you. I'm not saying you should become arrogant. I'm just telling you, see your identity in Christ and begin to live that way. Drop anything that is not... Your dad may have been a murderer. That is not you. Your dad may have been the poorest person in the whole world. That is not you. That's what the angel was trying to tell... Uh, what's this boy's name? Gideon. When he when met Gideon, that the Lord is with you, you mighty one. He says, no. He says, I am the smallest. From a tribe that is the smallest. He said, don't say that. He says, the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. God doesn't see you from your background. He sees you from the future that he's creating for you. And if you look at the Bible, God doesn't call people by their past or their present. He always calls them by their future. Your future is bright. <laughs> if only some of you can see what your future is like, you take yourself more serious. <laughs> you take yourself more serious. So don't let anybody taunt you about anything. There are those that are brilliant, but they have been made to look like they don't know anything socially. Because they believe once you are brilliant, you are not socially acceptable. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is well in Jesus' name. So going up under these conditions have, will make anyone have illusions. Most people escape this by creating fantasies and by daydreaming. When consistently fixated upon it, it can now create an expectation that is contrary to scriptures and the rules that God has made that we should live in this life. I don't know what you have been through, but I encourage you today to take it to Jesus. Express your pain to him. I did that many years back and he has helped me. No issues to me, actually. It helped me. There are no issues too big for me to forgive. Some of you find it hard to forgive because you are not taking your illusions to the Lord. You hold on to things. For me, it's easy to let go because I have taken my pain to Jesus. I don't hide anything from the Lord. I don't. If I'm feeling one kind, I make it known to the Lord that, Lord, this is how I feel. That's why it's a relationship. It's not a dictatorship that we are doing with God. It's a relationship. Express your fears to him. If you don't even know how to guide your family, tell God that this thing, this marriage thing, I don't have a hang on it. Oh, can you help me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's one way where your unrealistic expectations can develop. Another way, or the second way, is media orientation. Hallelujah. Media. See, the media is a very powerful tool that shapes people's expectation in an unrealistic way. The tools employed by the media include music and music videos, reality shows, big brother, small brother, useless brother, books, social medias, especially the ones that employ pictures as a major tool for deploying their content. Instagram in focus. The devil's goal is to use the content of the mainstream media to shape your thinking away from the word of God. And what they use the most is the power of repetition. That's why you realize that when they want you to remember a song, they pay radio stations and they keep playing it, they keep playing it. No matter how holy you are, no matter how holy you are, once they start playing the song, in fact, some of you that have, some of you that have neighbors that are crazy, you just realize that even though you have gospel song, but you know every other song because your neighbor early in the morning will play it late in the afternoon will play it evening he will play it even when you want to go and sleep he will tell you without the music he cannot sleep you are angry about it until one day you are taking your bath you just realize you say if you don't get money i don't fix they say ah jesus no that should not come out of my mouth that is how media works. They keep using that thing to shape you, shape you. Same way when they want you to have an idea about a relationship that is not right. They start by pointing some of those things in your mind and they keep repeating it. They keep repeating it. They take a celebrity, for instance, that will tell you that breaking up with, that sleeping with two women at the same time, there's nothing wrong with it. Then they start pushing it. Hashtag this Hashtag that, all of you that are social media savvy, you know the hashtags available. And everybody in thousands. Governments have been toppled just with simple stroke of hashtag. See one of the candidates 
for instance, for a presidential, whatever, there is something going on. Somebody called me, client called me this morning saying, uh, I should tell, okay, I was saying it in the beginning, that it's a gay, is uh, this one, is that one. I said, how did you know? He says it's all over the media. My people say, if you want to kill a dog, just give it a bad name. That is what media does. And that is what the devil uses to shape all of our expectations. So you wake up one day, you watch a video, you see a perfect couple. The woman slaps the husband because she said something he didn't like. And the guy would go down and say, I'm trying to sing Indian song now. <laughs> say, forgive. Then they start dancing. Did you? Did you? Then you as a woman will say, ah, that's the kind of husband that God wants me to have. The one that when I slap, it will beg me. Then one day your marriage, argument happen, then you just give the man a backhand. That's the last thing you remember. <laughs> because you are waking up in the hospital. Asking the hospital. You tell not say, where am I? They say you are in the hospital. How did I get here? They say your husband brought you here. You say, what happened? When you see yourself in the mirror, say, what happened to me? Your husband will say, can't hit you on your way to this place. <laughs> it is later you realize that uh, it was the one that beat you blue black <laughs> because you saw something somewhere that wasn't right. Well, it was reinforced in your subconscious. That's why, as a Christian, you can't stay away from the Bible. That's why we keep emphasizing it here. We are, that's why it looks like I'm against power, power because all these things happen more to power, power people because you believe every crisis will be solved by the anointing. But it is not true. The devil programs people for destruction. That is why we also preach a transformational message for people's minds. So be careful of the media. I'm not saying you don't watch anything you want to watch. <laughs> My wife will always forward, say something forward to me and say, what do you think about this? I said, this is right, this is not right. I don't agree with this. I've told you of one of my ladies that sent uh, that uh, people uh, chase somebody from church because his phone rang and uh, they accepted him. I said, that's how the media, and that thing spread everywhere. I said, please delete it from your own status because that is demonic. Because if your phone should ring after I've warned you, I will smash the phone. Yes, my son, I can buy it. <laughs> Because that is what the media does. They are trying to make it look to people now that their parlor is where you get acceptance and you will not get acceptance in church because of your phone. Now, I ask them, can you put your phone in front of Wiki when you are talking to him? Mm. Then you think when you come here, you can do anything. That's for pastors that don't know who they are in Christ or they are afraid for their belly. Mm. God is my source. So if you have to leave here because I told you to put off your phone, so be it. I don't want to lose anybody, but I will also not drop God's standard so that the place will be overfilled in the night. If we, you saw the Valentine program now, all I need to do is to tell you people to go out and tell them, we are going to wait the dead tomorrow. This place will be filled. But if they come here, I still want to do that thing now. I don't know when. But I will do a big billboard, crutches, stretcher. We will show it. Everybody come to the stadium. Then when they come, soldiers will barricade everywhere. You'll be able to go out. Then I will preach a holiness and salvation message I've never preached before. That when I leave you to go, as I say, you see all your life. You are here now because you want miracle. Say all you need is Jesus. You don't even have Jesus. You are looking for miracle. Oh, God Almighty. Let me hold my thoughts inside. So let me hold my... You still don't know. You still don't know half of what is in my brain, honestly speaking. If only you know. Don't let the media begin to direct you anyhow. Stay with the Bible. Stay with what is realistic. If they, I'm, I'm not saying you will not get what is good on the media. Once in a while, they showcase what is good. But most of the time, look at CNN and Trump, for instance. They are perpetually in a war because Trump believes that CNN is always misrepresenting him. That is what media can do. All you need is a demonic person at the end of affairs. I mean, before now, it was a taboo to talk about being lesbian or LGBT. But now, it is acceptable because the media has given it a voice. And even Christians, foolish Christians, are saying that you can come the way you are. If you are like that, God will accept you. Yes, we know God will accept you. But if after you come to us, you are still like that, no, that is the devil working inside you. We will cast it out and give you a wife, a proper wife to marry. Yes, we will give you. That's how we test that you have been delivered. Say you should go and marry. If you still say no, sir, it's still the same sex I want. Then we say now we cannot help you by the anointing. We cannot help you by counseling. We will cast you out <laughs> into the lake of fire ourselves. Go out there and do what you want to do. So that's the devil's goal to so use the media to shape our thinking away from the word of God. They use repetition to reinforce the message in your mind. That's why we always say come to church. 
Tiwa Savage can be your role model if you're a Christian lady. It cannot be. I, I hear some, I see some of these things uh, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm shocked at what has happened to Christianity. When you ask a Christian man, a Christian woman, who is your role model, and they start reading out demonic people. And I begin to ask myself, is something wrong with us? Take music, for instance. Let me read some research to you. That's why I started preaching early. Because I have a lot of things to undo on this one. Do you know that music has been realized that it affects people negatively, even health-wise? In fact, in the spiritual content, music can actually transmit demonic operations into your life. A Christian cannot be possessed. But a Christian can have demonic influence of oppression over his mind. And most times, music can bring it. Music cast out a devil in the Bible. So that's how we know that music can bring a devil also back into your life. Let me read some research to you. These are even scientific research now, not even scriptural. This was written by William Smith and Larry J. Bloom. They are researchers. This is despite the controversy surrounding every metal music, for instance, it has been noticed that it increases the level of arousal of the listeners, not only sexually, but physiologically. Arousal of anger is very common. It says a methodological sound experimental study has been tested by this relationship. This study incorporated an experimental design to utilize the individual differences of, of subjects as a moderating variable in determining the effect of heavy metal music on listeners, self-reported on listeners, and they reported their self levels of arousal and anger. He said it was found that heavy metal music made all subjects increase in anger levels. Overall, subjects who identify themselves as fans of this music show higher levels of anger than those that are not. It is suggested that the effects of heavy metal music are mediated by subjects, though individual differences cannot be ruled out, but these factors are always there. Anger. Anger. That is one. This one is from the American Medical Association, their Department of Science and Technology now. They say there is no evidence to really show in terms of empiricalism that any damage or harmful effect can be seen from music on behavior of younger people like adolescents. But we can conclude also that those that identify with some sounds like heavy metal music may be at risk of drug abuse or even participation in satanic activities. In fact, one of our doctors wrote that for every teenager who commits suicide because of this music or comes under a crime by the influence of this music, there are dozens of others that are white-collar criminals engaged in insider trading, stealing fraud, and government corruption because of the effect of music that some of them listen to. Are you with me? These are scientists talking now. It says during adolescence, this, this one is by the, a doctor, Dr. Brown, and one NDWR. It says during adolescence, teenagers are expected to develop standards of behavior and reconcile them with their perception of adult standard. In this context, music, a powerful medium in the lives of adolescents, offer conflicting values. The explicit sexual and violent lyrics of some of this music often clash with the themes of abstinence and rational behavior promoted by adult society. We are saying, don't stop sleeping with people. They are saying, if you use condom, it is possible. Are you listening to me? It says, identifying with some of this music, particularly those styles that are rejected by adults, functions to separate adolescents from adult society. Some forms of rock music extend well beyond respectability in fulfilling some of this role. When you are totally immersed in a culture of uh, heavy metal music and bad music, some at times may portray the younger people as being alienated or a reflection of what they are listening to in terms of moral and ethnical, ethical duplicity. Physicians are always made to be aware of these roles of music as it affects the emotional and mental health of young people. So when we tell you, you tell us it's not doing anything. You can go online and just put effects of music as well. You will see dozens of proven research. Is it those that stay with some of these sexually explicit songs? There is one, Dog Sinatas. It's a, a popular band. The way they write all their lyrics is always uh, inverted. Dog Sinatas, for instance, if you 
uh, turn it upside down means Satan is God. Now, if you, yes, you can write it and invert it. Now, if you put their lyrics, because they have one, I actually watched a documentary on that, you have to turn the CD pamphlet to your mirror to get the real reflection. And once you read what is there, you'll be shocked at what they wrote there glorifying the devil. It's like you are, in, it's like you are invoking the spirit of demons over yourself. Why do you think some of these young people that listen to every rock music, why do you think they become suicidal? Because these effects are there. That is the power that you can get from media. So what we are telling you in essence is you should try and limit your media exposure to what is positive. All your children should not watch every program. Even you, every program is not good for you. One pastor used to say, he likes saying that it is risky for a Christian to watch uh, Juju film. That's the ones with uh, all this uh, Amadio and all these things. And as you are watching it, you slip off on it. That most times you will see demons chasing you. It was being funny, but there could be reality to that. People that even watch horror films a lot, go and look at them very well. It has been seen that they always expose themselves to some spiritual activities. I'm not trying to scare you because Christianity is spiritual. The, the, the knowledge of revolution try to make it only mental, but it is not. Knowledge is good, but there's a spirit. Christianity, as a matter of fact, is balanced on both the knowledge of the word of God and the operations of the spirit. If it doesn't have the two legs, it is not Christianity. So a teacher now can come and tell you that if you are praying too much, God doesn't like it. But a prophet will definitely not tell you that. But a prophet can tell you you don't need to listen to a teacher, that you just need this power. Both of them are right partially, but you need to put it together to have the true picture of Christianity. A genuine pastor will not tell you that. He will not tell you. You need to pray like tomorrow is not there. Then embrace the word of God like that's the only tool you have. It is on those two legs that Christianity rests. So don't let anybody deceive you. Your expectations have been shaped by the media. Some of you don't know anything about marriage other than what you have read in means that booms, uh, some of these crazy soft cells and destructive soap operas, another life. They tell you it is right to keep cheating and cheating and cheating and cheating that you keep being forgiven. There's a way you cheat up to after you are even God himself will say there's no forgiveness for you. Go away. Okay, that's my anger talking now. God can forgive as many times as possible. But you understand what I'm saying. They do some of those things just to change your mind. They use it to bring down your standard and you think some things that are wrong are the things that should be accepted. Only your expectations will destroy any relationship that you are in. Let your expectations be realistic. Can I have an amen? Amen. For example, you can find solutions online actually i'm not saying everything online is demonic because i need to put a balance but what are the media shaping for instance there's one part i've seen that have shaped people's opinion or people's thinking is when they marry a lot of people prioritize how they look outside to what they are in their house like my own family we've always put comfort that's the family comfort ahead of for example if i need ac in my house and i know it will make my children okay let's say it's hundred thousand and i have a social function maybe somebody's father died or the some and bash will be or they are the same I, I don't care about your father even if it's my father that is dead i will wear anything i have and come and use that hundred thousand to buy ac because to me that is much more important because that's the way my values have been shaped i have friends that are rich but when you get to their house you'll be shocked but when you see them outside, you say, Ranka, did it? When you get to the house, nothing. Nothing. Uh, I don't think that's a good value, but everybody to their own, I think you should come to your house and have a relaxing effect. Let it be a place you want to run to because you have put everything well in shape. Even if it is 10 clothes you have, let the house be. Don't prioritize looking good as over being uh, hungry. I know people that they don't have food in their stomach, but they have clothes that is enough to feed their ancestors. Give them this thing. They say, no. They just want to buy what you've seen and they are dying of hunger. You have to put a balance. That's all I'm saying. And the third one that shapes our unrealistic expectation is emotional deficiency. You develop unrealistic expectations when you are emotionally deficient. A wife should be loved and cared for, but you need to have a grip on your emotions as well. Stop being needy emotionally. You must not always be the main attraction. Some of you cannot just stand it. Especially women. Everything must revolve around you. Mm -mm. 
That is unrealistic expectation. Everything does not revolve around anybody. The world does not revolve around you. Grow up. If you are starved of love, acceptance, recognition, value, what? Now that you are in Christ, let Christ give you all those things. First, I'm not saying it's an excuse for the husband to be negligent, but I'm saying that you cannot always think that it must be the other person that must give that to you. Hallelujah. God's love is the most paramount. Now that you are in love with Christ and Christ is in love with you, he will teach your husband how to grow to love you. But don't use your emotional deficiency. Some of you, because your father has never ever told you I love you before, you just want to hear it, I love you in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, even if it's the devil that is telling you, you want to hear it. If that's what is worrying you, because I can see some ladies doing like this, yes, yes, record it on the tape and be playing it for yourself. Record it on your phone and be playing it for yourself, if that will help you. I'm not saying the husband should not say it, but that should not be the reason why you will now frown and carry your face like the world has ended. That's emotional deficiency. Emmanuel, can I have an amen? Amen. Uh, you know, in this church, it's difficult to sleep because I'm looking at everybody. Wait, when we are like 1,000, that time I will jump into your midst and be looking like this too. Say, we are those sleeping. Let me catch them. So, for people that are always looking for validation, it's good. But don't let it has led a lot of ladies into the wrong relationship. The devil will tell you how beautiful you are just to get you to bed, and once it's done, it's gone. You don't need that. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. But I think Sunday, we'll look at, we'll continue from there. Just show you five signs. Not, that's not all the sign, but five that I think are important. How do I know I am having unrealistic expectations? I've showed you how it is formed. Now, how do you know that your expectations are unrealistic? Let me take one. The first one, how do I know I have unrealistic expectations? when you expect your friend or your partner to know what you are feeling and understand those feelings. Nobody knows your feeling. So stop all this nonsense. If you really love me, you should know how I feel. It's your feeling. That's why it is your own. And ladies are actually guilty of that and I need to mention that because you expect a man or you expect your friend to do what they call it. You expect them to know what you are thinking, whether the Holy Spirit reveals it to them or something, you send them to know what you are thinking and then act based on what you are thinking. If you don't tell him, how will he know? Hallelujah. So, in an intimate relationship, like couples, for instance, they often expect that their partner will know and understand their needs and expectations without communicating. I've always heard people, I used to dream of those things until I married and realized that they were just saying nonsense. I've always heard couples say that, ah, me and my husband, we so much love each other that he, before I say it, he knows what I'm thinking. It, 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 it doesn't work like that. Oh. It doesn't work like that. Maybe after 50 years oh, of repeating a, I mean, for now, they know in my house, I like, I don't eat cold food. So if they bring food cold, it's not because they know what I'm thinking. It's a result of constantly living with me. So I got ahead and say, if he loves you, he can perceive your feeling. No, you're feeling Habba. Even God Himself says, say he's repenting, creating man, as in tire for human beings and their behavior. <laughs> then you are saying that uh, somebody. So when your partner fails to live up to this unrealistic expectation, disappointment and unhappiness starts to creep into the relationship. It is not realistic to expect your partner to be able to read your mind. It's not the Holy Spirit. And always act according to your wishes. That if he knows, he should have known by now I'm feeling like a ramsuya. How will he know if you don't tell him? Say, so you don't even care about what I know. I know human beings and our desires that can change per minute. Today, somebody is liking bread, liking bread, liking uh, uh, this uh, supermarket close to us. Now, what's their name now? Market Square Bread. Then one day you buy the bread, say, I don't even know, it's not, it, this thing is, can be tiring now. We can't be eating this thing every day, every day. Can't you buy nibbles? Then that's the woman that you are expecting. Now you are saying that he wants to read your mind. It is not possible. So when you expect that your partner will know what you are feeling and understand your feelings, that is an unrealistic expectation. It is not possible to fully understand somebody, especially a woman. Okay, sorry. <laughs> That was not in my note. I just realized I added it now. 
Communicating consistently and honestly is the essential building of sustaining relationship. When you're angry with your friend, say it. If you have a friend, it is not, even if everybody will shout, no problem. But communicate it, say it. You want something, it's not the time to you to start uh, expecting that people will just know it by miracle and it will drop on you. Even if your name is miraculous, it is still not possible. So when you start having some of those issues in your mind, your expectations are unrealistic. Number two, the second one is, I've heard this actually, so that's why I took the ones that are really very, very, that has almost misled me, that is vexing me. That if the relationship is good, there will not be fight. That is a lie. Because I know a lot of people will not agree with it, especially some people from a part of this uh, Christianity. Anybody that tells you he has not fought his wife or argued with his wife before, I don't care if it is a pope, he's a bloody liar. If he's not lying, then the second reason is either his wife is a dunce. The third reason is if he's very good at mind control and manipulation. You know, the baby, they control you. Other than that, a person created by God with intelligence will always have a different opinion. So all these messages people listen to in the name of faith, that I'm here to fight my wife, I am sorry. There is no basis for it. It is a lie. Ah, some of you are not married here. Let me just leave you. Try living with a woman. Then you will find out the mother of all conflict. That they can just tell you that you, I didn't like the way you are looking at me on it, the way you said it, the way you, did not, the way you look when you said it. And you too, ah, that's okay, this is your girlfriend that said that to you before, eh? <laughs> Then you yourself, you just vex. That how much do you want me to say? Blah, blah, blah. Then before you know it, the issue of saying or looking becomes an issue. It could be as tiny as you did not appreciate what I did. You could not appreciate what I'm doing for you. But that you will not have conflict in relationship, please get it straight. It will not happen. And conflict is different from boxing. Please. Before you leave here and punch somebody and say, Pastor Jackson said, there is no way we will not have conflict. I didn't say boxing. I said conflict. Arguing loud, arguing and talking one on one, not busha, igji, brotolu, not boxing. Conflict. Repeat after me. Say conflict. <laughs> so there will be conflict in a relationship, and don't be afraid of that, please. If you love each other genuinely, you should be able to walk through the conflict. Either it is friend to friend or husband to wife or whatever even in your office there will be issues with your boss will you not say because your boss is angry you now you will break your boss's head ah see some people say hmm. you will not only be out of job if it's a powerful boss it will ensure that you don't ever get work within within three states of his vicinity hallelujah so it's very important that you understand this it's very very key very key very key. Conflict will arise in every type of relationship. So we have to have an, a realistic expectation of that. Conflict can serve both negative and positive purpose. Conflict allow partners to discuss issues in the relationship. What each partner likes, dislikes, what she's missing, what is missing, what we like to add to the relationship. What do you expect from each other? Conflicts like most things in life are inevitable. It is quite normal to have conflicts and arguments every now and then in a relationship. One of the most unrealistic expectations partners have is that conflicts won't occur in a good relationship. Some partners erroneously believe this, that their relationship will work that way and they avoid conflict at all costs. If you are always avoiding conflict because you think it will make your relationship work, that is what will destroy it at the end of the day. I'm not saying it should be somebody that looks to fight but conflicts are bound to happen you can't be in a relationship where if somebody says something you say okay okay okay, okay let peace reign peace for the sake of no peace for the sake of peace is actually not peace that is foolishness you don't have peace for the sake of peace in fact when they say justice it means not that because there is peace it means that there is conflict that you have resolved then somebody gets justice or both gets justice so conflicts are going to happen our time is almost done and you know i don't like going past 7 30 so i will continue with number three four and five before i move into selfishness on sunday have you learned something i pray that it will work for you in your relationships 
I pray that after tonight, your relationships will grow. You will.